welcome to my video. Today's video, I'm going to talk about how to take Garmin Basecamp routes that you've created and load them onto your uh, GPS device. In this case, it's the uh, Garmin Nav 6 because that's the one that came up in one of the Facebook groups that I was um, reading the other day. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. Number one, I'm going to show you how to do it using Garmin Basecamp and putting it onto the actual SD card itself without having um, the actual uh, GPS connected, which you can do if you've already got these routes created, all right? If you don't have these routes created, then you have to actually hook up the GPS direct because you have to be able to use the mapping software uh, that's on the um, GPS in order to create the actual route. But in this case, um, I just have a, a SD card, a micro SD card in a micro SD card reader. It's, uh, I called it RAW just to show you that it's not anything special for um, uh, Garmin. I just uh, formatted it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the raw SD card just to show you what's on it. And right now, all I have is one GPX file. Now I put this on separately from an email that I sent myself and I wanna show you how to do that with your phone here in just a little bit. But this is not how this would be formatted if you installed it from the um, Garmin uh, Basecamp software. For the Garmin Basecamp software, and I'll just leave this up over here. You go over here to um, My Collection. You click on My Collection. You go to File, and you import from uh, My Collection. So depending on where you have that folder setting, in my case, I have it on my network under My PC documents it's a file called my garmin and then anytime you create a route in garmin basecamp it's going to save it to the my garmin folder wherever you have that setting uh, in my case i have my documents on an external drive and that's why it does that for you it'd be just your documents right on your computer your pc so these are all various um gpx routes that i've developed over the years uh, so as an example, uh, day one, I want to go ahead and import it. So I'm going to import it into the into the system, um, into, into the actual um, software. And you can see it shows the route right here. Very nice. Now, if I want to put this on the card, I would just right click it. I would send it to the card itself. Hit OK. Once I import it, we get a folder that says user data. If I go back here, you'll see now it created a folder called Garmin and it created an ID text. When I open up the folder Garmin, it has a folder called GPX. And when I open up that folder, it gives me something called route and waypoints. Now, if I add other additional GPX routes into that card through the Garmin Basecamp software, it'll just do route zero, route one, route two, route three, and it puts waypoints into this waypoints folder. So it breaks it up like that. So there's really no way that you can identify which is which until you load it onto your um, Nav 6 or your uh, Zoomy or whatever it is you're using by Garmin that you're going to install these on. In my case, it's a Nav 6. So as you can see that my Michigan Shoreline 4th of July tour day two is sitting outside of all that. But because it's a properly formatted .gpx file, and in this case, it is 498K. It's going to be found by the um, nav, and I'm going to be able to import it. And I'll show you that here in just a few minutes. So now, basically, what I've done is I've gone from just drop, dragging and dropping something over to this card called RAW um, to actually loading it from the Basecamp software, which in this case, it creates a folder called Garmin. And then inside that folder called Garmin, it creates a folder called GPX, and then it creates this right here. Now, if I take this one step further and I go and find another item from my collection, we'll say uh, day six, and I'm gonna put day six in here. Now I'm gonna send it to the um, card. Actually, I've just sent it to raw and it will, it will actually put it in there properly the way it's supposed to be. See the green check mark means it's been installed. There's that route now. 
when I go back here, see now I've got a route zero. So even though I just sent it to the top line of the card, it put it in this GPX folder and the waypoints folder actually got larger because it's throwing the waypoints from this route zero into there. So this is how it works for when you're using Basecamp. And that's the way it, that's the way it, it, it properly formats all this, but it keeps it very mysterious. So you don't know what these routes really are until you import them into your device. In this particular case, how I got this was I went to here and once I created my actual route, uh, in this case, it would have been down here. Then what you can do is you can take this and you can, um, you can save it. You can export it. And when you export it, you can pick where you want it to go. Now it will default to my documents, uh, my Garmin, but you can also send it any, any folder that you want to send it to. In fact, you can actually send it to the card itself, which is what I did. So there's a couple of ways to export this stuff to this card, but as long as it comes off of Basecamp, it'll be properly formatted regardless of which folder it's in or how it's named. In this case, it's named that. Now, what's the advantage of this is once I get this one created the way it is with this naming convention, then I can actually go into my mail program. In this case, I'll use Gmail and I'll compose a Gmail. I'm going to email it to myself. I'm going to go grab that file. In this case, I put it in my downloads, day two. And I'm going to email it to myself, which is the same way that I would email to, my, um, to a friend or someone else that's riding with me on tour. Or I could take that file and I could drag and drop it into a, um, a Facebook post, as an example. And then they could download it and install it that way themselves. So now that I've done all that, I'm going to show you how it installs into the actual Garmin um, device. Whether, like I said, in my case, it's going to be a NAV. Okay, so now we're at the NAV 6. We have our micro SD card that we put our information on. But how do we get it onto this, to this device? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you that there is nothing else on this device. So what I'm going to do here is there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to go to apps. I'm going to go to trip planner and it says there's no saved trips, imported trip. There's no trips found. Okay. So go back here. There's nothing saved. I have a, I have no, uh, no uh, trips saved of any kind. There's no recent trips, nothing saved except for the actual Garmin default items, which those are right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small zero size Phillips head right there. And we're going to go ahead and undo these two screws on the back of the cover. Now, just to let you know that um, these are water resistant um, items. If you can see right here, you got this little blue rubber gasket around here. So when you put this back on, you got to make sure that you put it on properly. Let me see if we can see this or not right here. Can I get it in focus? Come on, focus. There it is. All right. You got to make sure these little clips right here are securely in the back of here so that this gasket will work properly and make it water resistant in case you get caught in the rain or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my battery. You just simply just push on that little clip right there. My product showcase. There we go. Push that little clip right there. And then over here, you're going to see this little area. That's where your micro SD card is going to go into right there. Okay. So we're going to slide that in right there. Make sure it's connected properly. Now you do have to put your battery back in and you have to put your cover back on. The Garmin actually can sense that it's not on. See right there, it shows a little, little indicator that you got to put your back cover on. Pretty smart. So that way you don't get any water inside of it, ruin your device. All right, now it's going to come back on. For I reset this earlier. That's why it asked me to do all this. So now we're going to go to our apps. We're going to go to Trip Planner. We're going to import. And now here's all of our items that we have. Now, the reason this shows up three times Remember, one of them is the one that I dragged and dropped, and the other two are the ones that are in that Garmin GPX folder that says route and route zero. 
So they get names once they're imported into the system and in, into the device. But until that time, they don't, they just called route zero and, and route and route one and whatever they want to name them, right? So you can select all and then you can import all of them or you can import them individually as you want to, to, to bring them in. So you don't have to use your PC every time to get stuff off of Garmin Basecamp into your uh, Garmin uh, nav. You can actually just put it onto an SD card like I just showed you. You do have to create them on Basecamp or whatever software you're using, but it has to be a .gpx file for this to work properly. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to do this by sending yourself an email, saving the email to the memory card of your phone. If your phone doesn't have a memory card option, then of course this is not going to be an option for you. But if your phone does have the ability to keep like a 64 or 128 gig card, uh, you can do this as well. I would recommend though that you don't go above 32 gig because even Garmin says you can go 128 gig, but you're probably better off with the lower uh, size, especially when you consider the fact that these are not very big files. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that now as well. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to download this to an SD card and actually install it onto your GPS device uh, from your phone. Now, some phones no longer have SD card capability, so you could also do this with a tablet that had that capability. I would say if you're going to go on tour, um, for a, a lengthy period of time, then you want to probably have a device that has the availability to be able to email things around, put them on SD cards, take the SD card out, and do that for photos as well. So anyways, uh, my phone does, uh, and so I'm going to show you how this works on my phone. I'm going to select Gmail. I'm going to bring up the email. That's the email right there where I downloaded that to myself. I'm going to select Download. I did already download it because it did take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and just bypass this, but it would just download into whatever folder you could. Uh, it goes to on your phone. In my case, I wasn't able to find it properly, so I went ahead and just did a search for .gpx. It found the file. There's the file right there, the Michigan Shoreline. So this is on currently on my phone. Now, I don't know if it's on my SD card or not, but I'm going to move it to there here in just a second. So now I'm going to go ahead and select my three dots. I'm going to hit move to. I'm going to move it to the SD card. And just, I can put it anywhere. I'll put it in my downloads folder if I want. I could add a new folder. I could call it GPX. Oops. Spell it right. GPX. There you go. And then it's one file move to .gpx. So now if I look on, a, if I do a search on my GPX, on my, my, um, my card, and I go to my SD card, go to download, GPX, there's my file. So now I'm gonna remove it from my phone because it's on my SD card. So it helps to make sure to have one of these little things with you. I would suggest putting your wallet somewhere where you have it. You should carry this with you all the time as an example. And um, in my case, on my phone, it is over here on the side. Pop it out. There's my SD card. Now I'm going to go ahead again. Move this off to the side. Now this is a 64 gig card. I haven't tried. I haven't. Um, I haven't formatted it. Uh, it's just been in my phone all this time. So. We're going to find out right now if this is going to work or not. It should. Oops. As long as it's properly formatted in a Windows format, it shouldn't really matter. Take this out. Remove the micro SD card that we talked about earlier. Put in the one that I just took out of my phone. It's installed properly. The cover back on. Let 
let you get the chance to load up. Apps, trip planner, import, and there it is right there. So now if I want to import this, I can import it directly into the device itself. So it's when it imports it, it's actually taking it off the card and putting it on the um, device. So let's say I was in another state somewhere and a friend of mine said, hey, I've got this really nice route you should try. Okay, email it to me. Now I just take it off the SD card of my phone, put it in my GPS device, have a cup of coffee, maybe lunch. <laughs> and then when it's done, I go ride the route that my buddy told me about that he had a GPX file for. So there you go. I've tried to Bluetooth. Bluetooth doesn't seem to work. It's not an option. Um, so that's the best ways I can tell you to be able to get routes into your NAV6 or your, your um, whatever, whatever one you've got from uh, Garmin that has uh, the capability of putting an SD card in um, that I can figure out. So if you have another way, go ahead and please let me know. Uh, I'm always willing to try new things when it comes to this. But I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, make sure and hit like. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.